Does anybody have a suggestion, a song you'd like to sing? We still have some more time. Pray, which in the hymn book? 72, number 72. 72, not 72, now 70, 76. Yes, je le rai l'éternel. All right, number 76 in the hymn book. Somebody else have a favorite you'd like to sing? No, no, that by I saw him first. Peter, it's Peter, right? What did you say? Sing the journey 27. Sorry? 27, sing the journey. Sing the journey number 27. We're having a little sing along here today.
Thank you very much. All right, we begin our evening session. And I'd like to begin by inviting the nominating committee forward. Or the chair, really. I would like to move that we accept the nominated slate as it was presented on Thursday evening and then the additional nomination of Don Rempel-Boschman to chair of witness last night. And those who affirm, raise your hand. Thank you. All right. Some of you will have been waiting for the results, I imagine, for the Future Directions Task Force recommendation that we voted on this afternoon. The following are the results. No, 21. Yes, 318. And spoiled ballots, four. And so I would like at this time then um, Aldred or, or Willard for a song. Our song leaders come forward again, please. Lead on, O cloud of presence. We now want to deal with the supplemental resolution found on page 12 of the supplement found on page 12 of your discernment guide, and I will invite Aldred forward um, to speak to this. As uh, Hilda um, has drawn your attention to uh, a supplemental resolution, uh, the wisdom um, when the original resolution was. Uh, 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 prepared uh, was that we might have need of a supplemental resolution 
um, giving notice, and, and so we gave notice to that effect in the uh, discernment guide. Um, and, and the supplemental re resolution is drafted as it, and I see there's an L in there, so somebody misspelled, and the spell checker didn't get that supplemental. Uh, the editor and me sees those sorts of things. Um, so, um, but the general board reviewed um, the, in our meeting earlier this week, reviewed the supplemental motion uh, against the bylaws and, uh, and decided that there re really was no material advantage to acting on it uh, for the reasons I mentioned yesterday. And that is um, the, uh, the bylaws specify up to 10. The intent was to reduce the number of voices uh, for each of the councils to two uh, and that these would be uh, on the count on the general board um, and uh, so so the wisdom was well actually the bylaws allow for that so we, we don't really need to act on that uh, with respect to the uh, witness council uh, there might be reasons why they might still be needed in the next year as a group of five and so that that uh, sorry Faith and Life, thank you for the correction. The, the Faith and Life Committee. Uh, there might still be need for, for that in the next year. So in checking with the parliamentarian, um, he, he observed that, well, notice has been served, but we haven't actually moved it, and so uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't be withdrawn from the table. So, so that's uh, just the action. Um, so we're not moving that forward. Um, now, the... The question has arisen, uh, changing, if I may change the topic slightly here, um, I heard in the discussion uh, around the floor and also yesterday, uh, earlier today and then yesterday, uh, wondering what was going to be done, what was happening, and, and so let me speak to that just a little bit. <clears throat> so with the motion um, having been adopted uh, and uh, the next steps a step really will be to get the interim council together as soon as possible for uh, to do cer certain things. First of all, to, to start thinking seriously about who should be on the transition team. Secondly, to look at a job description and uh, perhaps a request for a proposal for um, a, a project manager to take a look at what the budget requirements are and to establish a timeline. So that would be the very next step. Um, there and we hope to have a meeting or, uh, within the next week. So, so we're going to get on to it and moving, uh, moving it forward. Um, and uh, I think as we move forward, we'll certainly be keeping as much as we can people informed, uh, the area churches and the congregations informed as to what's happening. Um, there will be a search for a project manager. Um, we'll certainly be doing a lot of consulting as to who should be on the transition team and that sort of thing. Uh, the question has been asked who to contact in this interim process or as we're getting going, where do we contact? Uh, the easiest answer to that is Willard. He's, he's a conduit for everything. It's not that he doesn't have lots of things to do, but he is, he is uh, the person. Oh, well, he's there, but his chair, is, his chair is down. It's empty now because he's doing something. It just makes my point. <laughs> uh, so so uh, Willard is the, the, the most obvious person. But that said, there certainly are in your area churches, your chief executive officer there or your, your moderator would also be a logical person to get in touch with. Uh, if you've got advice, if you've got ideas, if you have questions. And uh, just speaking as assistant moderator, I, I just encourage as has been said earlier t uh, today and yesterday, uh, just encourage as much dialogue and input as possible. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Okay, I'd invite the resolutions committee to come forward. I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself, and I am to a degree. With the vote on the Future Directions Task Force report completed, the Resolution Committee moves, whereas the Future Directions Task Force has provided us with a report which offers insights to us for the future of the church 
and offers wisdom and recommendations to the transition team and has thus completed their mandate, be it resolved that the delegate body of Mennonite Church Canada thank the Future Direction Task Force members for their work and release them and dissolve the task force. Those who affirm the resolution, raise your hand. And I think we can put our hands together also for their work. Thank you. Now we're going to be dealing with uh, one of the resolutions that we had initially thought to deal with yesterday and are dealing with now. Um, as indicated yesterday, the resolution guidelines affirm that we want to create ways for members to raise concerns and recommendations and to test insight into God's will and prophetic word. In your discernment guide on pages 28 and 29, you have received one such advanced resolution from Byron Rempel Burkholder and Palmer Becker on Palestine Israel. Two responses came to the moderator from people outside our denomination expressing deep concern regarding the actions of MC Canada that, that MC Canada is considering with this resolution and um, asked us to reconsider. Uh, one of the results of that is we had a meeting with some of the people who had written one of the letters. And so at this point, uh, the I'd like to bring the, uh, invite the Resolutions Committee to come forward again um, and um, identify the work. Well, I, I just skipped a part here. I should check here. Um, as a result of that, the Resolutions Committee, uh, or one of the members, as well as the Executive Committee, met with the mover and seconder to share some of the concerns that were expressed by one of the groups with whom we met. And so I would write, like to invite the Resolutions Committee to come forward to present the work of the committee this time. So on your tables in front of you, you should find a, yours is not going to look exactly like mine, but you're going to find a sheet that highlights some of the modifications that have been made. One point of clarification to make ahead of time is throughout the resolution, whenever you see the word Israel, we are, we are, it's, this is a point of clarification, we are speaking of the state of Israel, not the Jewish people, so keep that in mind. We have made, uh, okay, we're in the whereas section. We have added to the first, uh, no, to the third pearl point, in addition to recognize the lament and the suffering of all Israeli citizens. We have inserted another pearl point, second from the end, which recognizes the complexity of the conflict between the state of Israel and Palestine. So, where, so it reads now, whereas we are called to follow Christ in the way of peace, doing justice, bringing reconciliation, and practicing non-resistance, we believe God calls us to speak truth to power, urging our governments, institutions, and businesses to take peaceful and nonviolent action against injustice where it occurs. We hear the continued pleas from, from Palestinian Christians that Western Christians take notice of the suffering of all Palestinians under Israeli occupation. We also recognize and lament the suffering of Israeli citizens. We believe it is God's will that Israelis and Palestinians live with one another in peace, justice, freedom, and security. We lament Israel's ongoing and increasingly entrenched military occupation and settlement of Palestinian lands in contravention of international law, including its violations of Palestinians' rights to movement and self-determination. We hear Palestinian Christians urging us and fellow believers around the world to exert economic pressure on Israel through boycotts, divestment, and sanctions as one of the few remaining options to end the occupation and facilitate a just peace with the Palestinian people. We recognize the complexity of the conflict between the state of Israel and Palestine. Even as we address the situation in Palestine and Israel, we confess our own complicity complicity in the colonization and oppression of the indigenous peoples of Canada, as well as our history of racist attitudes and behaviors towards Jews. 
be it resolved then that we look to the gospel of, of Jesus Christ for guidance and grace in our responses to the Palestine and Israel context. We commit ourselves to ongoing prayer, searching and discernment concerning the ways in which we as congregations, communities and church members are impeding or facilitating, ignoring or promoting the quest for a just peace between Palestinians and Israelis. We affirm the efforts of Israelis and Palestinians who are committed to nonviolent ways of overcoming the injustice of their region. And we have added here, we commit ourselves to working in partnership with them and with Jews and Palestinians in Canada. We urge our member congregations to deepen their understanding of the Palestine-Israel relationship through the study of educational materials on the topic and through participation in learning tours to the region. We ask the Mennonite Church Canada General Board, regional churches, congregations, and members to avoid investing in or supporting companies that do business with Israeli settlements and the Israeli Defense Forces, and companies that are profiting from the occupation of the Palestinian territories. And finally, we encourage the Government of Canada to support measures that put pressure on Israel, including, including through economic sanctions, to end the end end the occupation and work for a just peace in accordance with international law. This has been moved by Byron Rempel Burkholder and is seconded by Palmer Becker. And I invite them forward at this time to speak to this resolution. Good evening. I would first like to thank uh, Mennonite Church Canada's short-term ministry program for the opportunity of volunteering this winter at Bethlehem Bible College along with my wife, Melita. What an eye-opener and what a blessing to rub shoulders with our fellow believers in Bethlehem. Before we returned to Winnipeg in April, I asked a professor at the college what message he would like us to convey to Canadian Mennonites. He surprised me by answering with a rebuke. Where have you Mennonites been for the last 30 years with regard to Palestine? My defenses went up and I began to talk about the 70 years of relief, development and the advocacy work that MCC and other Mennonite agencies have done. He clarified his question. Why haven't Mennonites, as a body, taken an active public stand against Israel's 49-year-old military occupation of the Palestinian territories? Where are the Mennonites? As the preamble states, this resolution echoes a call from Palestinian Christians on behalf of the Palestinian people. These brothers and sisters remind us of the great injustices that the Palestinians are suffering. Their houses and farms are being confiscated for new Jewish-only settlements, restricted roads, and separation walls, all declared illegitimate under international law. Basic human rights with regard to freedom of movement, water, and dignity are being denied. At the same time, like Mennonites, Palestinian Christians share a biblical vision of shalom in which God's blessings flow equally to all, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and in which one group does not dominate and repress another. With this resolution, we as a body say it's time to take one more step, oppose the occupation through our prayers and our visits but also in our investment and purchasing practices and in our advocacy with our politicians. And so I support you to, uh, I hope you will support this resolution. Thank you. I second this motion because it's a way to work for peace. In this resolution, we are not taking sides between the is Israel and, and Palestine. Uh, we support the need for a safe place to live for both Israeli Jews and the Palestinian Arabs. 
We grieve whenever there is a loss of life, whether that is Palestinian or, or Israeli. In, in fact, I keep correspondence with a rabbi who is a teacher in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. And just this week, he shared with me that, uh, that one of his rabbi friends was killed. I'm going to send a sympathy card to the family of that one who's lost. Uh, he also incidentally said, I, I sent the resolution to him, and he says, although I disagree with you, I've learned a lot, and I want to keep the conversation going in that, uh, that this resolution can do that. We are taking sides when it comes to justice. And uh, Pope John Paul in 1972 said, if you want to work for peace, you need to work for justice. As Mennonites, I believe whenever there is violence, how do you get rid of violence? You get rid of that which is causing the violence or the war. And in this case, it is the occupation and how the Palestinian people are being treated in those occupied lands that is causing the, the difficulty. So this resolution is suggesting a nonviolent way of stopping the injustice. In the long run, it will be good for Israel and for the Jewish people because the only way they can live at peace and maybe even only survive is if they uh, treat the Palestinian people with justice. I've been to Palestine five times now. I've been in Gaza. Um, I would compare the plight of many of the Palestinians as being equal to how the Jews were treated in Poland in 1920, uh, in the 20s and 30s. Unfortunately, the persecuted people have become wealthy and have become the, the persecuting. And we feel that this resolution is one step towards calling for justice. What does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? I'll open it up for discussion now. We've got three mics. Harold Peters, friends, and just a quick, uh, see whether the Resolutions Committee and the Movers are okay with this uh, friendly kind of thing. I think the, Jew, the word Jews has sometimes had a pejorative implication throughout history. Is Jewish people not more respectful? No? I don't know. I won't insist on it, but I'll leave it. Thank you. Henry Funk, Zor Mennonite, wall time. Ern and I recently completed our second term of service in Nazareth, in Israel-Palestine, with Mennonite Church Canada, and we wish to thank you for that opportunity. We have many Jewish, Christian, and Muslim friends there. Our friends frequently asked us to tell their story. The Christians and Muslims in Israel are second-class citizens. They face systematic discrimination in areas of education, housing, water use, and a multitude of other areas. In the West Bank, under Israeli occupation, the people face even greater hardships. The wall, 30 feet high, 85% of that wall is built on West Bank property. This land is annexed to the state of Israel. The wall prevents Palestinians from an accessing jobs in Israel. The Israeli occupation seriously restricts the movement of people in the West Bank. Many of the people in the West Bank are citizens of no country. The unrest in the region is largely due to the injustice and hopelessness of their situation. I encourage you to vote for the resolution on the floor. Economic pressure on Israel is a step towards peace. This motion is in the best long-term interest of Christians, Muslims, and Jews in the land of Jesus' birth his ministry, his death and resurrection. Thank you.
Thank you. Steph Chandler Burns from Bloomingdale Mennonite Church in uh, Bloomingdale, Ontario. Um, I'm in full support of this motion, um, but I do want to remind us of the relationships that we have here in our own communities that we need to be intentional about as we vote on this. Uh, that includes our Jewish brothers and sisters that we, that we work alongside, um, that we pay heed to, uh, to healing and repairing and, and being intentional about those relationships. It also includes our Aboriginal neighbors as we have been oppressors ourselves. Um, and I think that we need to be very intentional about looking at the log in our own eyes as we move forward uh, with, the, with this motion. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, I've spoken twice. I don't know if I have the privilege of speaking again. It's a different this. subject. Pardon me? It's a different subject. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's a different subject, so go Thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am inclined to support this motion. Um, at the same time, it would seem important for us to understand the complexities from a variety of perspectives, and in this way. What does an Israeli politician do when people come from the West Bank to kill people in Israel with um, suicide bombs? The worst, we think of the wall as this terrible solution, and it is a terrible compromise, but it is a compromise that Israeli politicians made in order to resolve a problem that is not perpetrated by all Palestinians, but it is perpetrated by Hamas or whatever group. And we shouldn't consider these to be pejorative terms. They're just groups within Palestinians, not all Palestinians. So help us understand how brothers and sisters within Palestine who are Christian relate to these other groups or do not relate or live with because they are also their neighbors. That's a part of the complexity. The other piece I would suggest, my brothers and sisters, is that having been to Chechnya and having observed ethnic violence, we have lived in a country where ethnicities learn from each other and grow with each other. And it's, it's remarkably difficult to understand what happens in communities when people have hundreds of years of history of killing each other for nothing other than their ethnicity. Help us understand how our Palestinian brothers and sisters are living in that context. So I want to support the motion, but also help us to understand this context better, because I confess that I do not. Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Ray Friesen, uh, Emmaus Mennonite Church, south of Swift Current. Uh, if I might uh, speak uh, one word of correction in terms of information, and then I want to add a few other pieces. Uh, the wall, although it has been promoted as a wall for safety, is a wall that's in fact built for political and economic reasons. Palestinians continue to routinely sneak into Israel to work, and Israelis hire them to work. Uh, the Palestinians gave up on suicide bombing because they realized it, it did more harm than good, uh, and so doesn't serve protection. It's easy to talk about complexities of problems. It's easy to talk about Israel-Palestine from a safe distance. It takes on an entirely different picture when you start sitting down with a, young, with a young Christian woman who suffers chronic back problems and will for the rest of her life because she was tortured by the Israeli military. Uh, it takes on an entirely different picture when a young man who works for Lage Center, an MCC partner just outside of Ida refugee camp, is hunted down by the Israeli army 
when they finally find him at his grandparents' home, they put all the other family members in the front room, and then the family has to listen to his screams as ten soldiers beat him up. It takes on an entirely different picture when a widow talks about how her husband had a heart attack, and although by Israeli law all ambulances are supposed to be given quick access to Jerusalem, his was delayed for a long time at the checkpoint. She remained with her husband till he died two months later in Jerusalem because she knew if she went home only once to check on her family, she would not be allowed back in, and in those entire two months their children were only allowed one brief visit with dad before he died. It takes on an entirely different picture when, as our daughter experienced, Israel turns off the water in Palestine and she can't flush her toilet and she can't take a shower and she can't do her laundry and she can't do her dishes. The only water she has is the water, bottles of water she buys at the local store. It takes on an entirely different picture when a wall is built through the middle of a community and all of a sudden your family members and your neighbors are on the other side of the wall and you simply can't visit each other. Hamas has at times decided to use violence to solve this problem. We all know by looking at Iraq what happens when violence is used when someone doesn't follow UN resolutions and international law. There are really only three options. Violence, the status quo that will continue to, to uh, oppress and pour down suffering on our Palestinian brothers and sisters, or active, nonviolent ways of making a difference. I think and your time is coming up. Thank you. This is one way of saying we will join with our brothers and sisters in Palestine and offer you a peaceful way of bringing about a resolution. Thank you. I did receive, as I said, a letter, uh, two letters really, and while I don't want to read the whole letter, I think I need to um, honor the, the people who, who, re who wrote it because we also met with them. And I would like to simply share with you um, a, a small excerpt of their perspective. One is that they, certainly in our conversations, recognize the, some of the problems. Um, their biggest concern, I think, was the boycott. The one thing that they, at the end of their letter, and certainly reiterated in the conversation we had um, with the rabbis this week, is that um, should you be successful, and that was it, it related to not um, having a, um, the boycott, we would be more than happy to discuss ways in which we can work together to support positive trust-building initiatives that strengthen Israeli-Palestinian reconciliation, coexistence, and the economic and social cooperation that create a foundation for lasting peace. I say there's a long letter and I won't read that, but that is some of the essence of it. This letter came from three rabbis from the Canadian Rabbinic Caucus, a body of Canadian rabbis representing synagogues across the spectrum of Jewish religious practice, is a partner organization of the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Uh, the, the particular rabbi we met with in person is from, from Saskatoon. The others were from across the country by phone. And they talked about the way in which they were engaging with Christians and Muslims in, 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 in Saskatchewan. Um, so I, just need, I felt I just needed to name that um, because they took the time to write and also uh, to meet with us. Yes. Hi, Laurie Gunther Reeser from Hamilton Mennonite Church in Ontario. I am no expert here, and so it would help me to know what, what we are divesting from, like what kinds of companies, what um, industries or uh, corporations we are divesting from.
maybe just a couple of examples. Uh, Caterpillar uh, Incorporated uh, produces caterpillars that are being used to build those uh, houses and build settlement houses in the, in the West Bank. And we're saying stop doing that. Uh, Remax uh, realtors were selling houses in the, in the occupied areas. And uh, the DeVest program told them stop doing that. And they have stopped doing it. So it's kind of an illustration that uh, this does put, uh, put pressure on in a nonviolent way to bring about peace. Israel is continuing to, uh, to occupy land, to take more and more, and we're simply saying stop doing that. There would be other communications companies that uh, would also be working uh, on, on the side of the military or the settlement. I would again want to say let's not develop a hatred for the Israeli people. We, we, we care about Israel, we care about Palestine, what we're talking about is justice. It says this war could end in a day if only justice were served to the Palestinian people. It would take away their motivation for, for the violent actions that are, being, that are taking place. Thank you. Amy Meyer from Rouge Valley Mennonite Church in Markham. Uh, this is a resolution that is close to my heart. Um, I have, uh, as a teenager, uh, lived and worked on a kibbutz. Um, my parents lived under Nazi-occupied Holland, and my parents um, were involved in offering refuge to uh, Jewish refugees during the war. Um, and so wanting to understand from the Jewish perspective what that was all about and going to Israel, living on a kibbutz, um, to, to be there and to understand more. And that's where I began to understand and be introduced to the Palestinian story as well, which then led to 20 years of going to Palestine on a regular basis, leading learning tours introducing people to the various partners uh, or the various participants or shareholders in the, in the conflict to hear, hear their stories on the, the Israeli side, taking people into the settlements to hear the stories there, uh, to the Palestinian neighbors of those settlements, um, people on all sides. To vote on this and to, to, um, to accept this resolution, uh, would also be welcomed amongst uh, a good number of people within the Jewish community as well in terms of Jewish Voices for Peace, uh, Rabbis for Human Rights, and many other Jewish organizations uh, that are speaking out about the violence of the occupation. And uh, I think that passing this resolution uh, will do well uh, for our Christian brothers and sisters in Palestine uh, our Muslim uh, brothers and sisters in Palestine and our Jewish brothers and sisters in the state of Israel and in the Jewish diaspora around uh, as well. Dealing with the occupation and speaking boldly against it, I think is a bold step to uh, establishing peace in our world because this conflict is connected to many other conflicts in our world. Thank you. Don Rempel Boschman from Douglas Mennonite Church. Um, part of me has no problem speaking against and calling for action uh, when injustice is done around the world. My concern is um, selectivity. I know we can't speak about every injustice in the world, but I guess I'd like to hear from the delegate floor because I don't remember every resolution that comes forth every year. But how many international conflicts have, when there's been an expansionist power, have we called for boycotts and economic sanctions? I mean. We're selling arms to the Saudis as a, as a Canadian people. Um, we uh, have seen an expansionist Russia and things like this. So my concern is that we uh, pick one conflict um, and sort of hold that up as, as the, the one issue that we, we speak to. And I want to know why we speak to one particular conflict and not what's happening in Eastern Congo or something like that. Thank you. Okay. 
After uh, listening to the delegate body and talking amongst yourselves and with the motioner and seconder, we'd like to make uh, two friendly amendments to the, uh, to the resolution as you, that you have in front of you. Uh, for the third, uh, for the last pearl point under whereas, instead of Jews, we would like to change that to uh, Jewish people. So the last sentence would, uh, the last portion of the sentence would read, as well as our history of racist attitudes and behaviors towards Jewish people. And then in the be it resolved, the third pearl point, we want to change that to say, we affirm the efforts of Israelis and Palestinians who are committed to nonviolent ways of overcoming the injustice in their region. We commit ourselves to working in partnership with them and the Canadian Jewish and Palestinian communities. So the question to you is, do you accept those as friendly amendments? Uh, raise your hand if yes. Opposed? Yes. Okay. Other questions or comments? I... Check, okay, check. I, uh, in response to the last... Um, Excuse me. Yeah. I, I asked him to speak. Okay. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> um, I'm, I've always been troubled by how it is that Christians on the Palestinian-Israel question seem to either be full-on Zionists or full-on pro-Palestinian. Um, I, so I, I don't know whether or not I support this resolution because of that particular concern. Uh, and so if we're talking about friendly amendments, I'm wondering if we could also recognize, call upon Palestinians to recognize Israel's right to exist. I think that's a huge psychological driver in the Israeli mind. Um, although I don't know that, I don't have Peter's or anybody's experience having gone there myself. But I can't help but think that that has to be a reality for them. I would also love to see a call for Hamas and uh, who's the other organization, to put down their arms. Rather than calling upon one side to put their, uh, down their arms, I would like us to, to call both sides to put down their arms and both sides to work towards justice. Now, clearly and obviously, it's the Palestinians who are getting the far, far worse of this. Um, but I, I'd like to, yeah, I just want to raise that as, as my concern. The other... I, have, I do have a greater concern, and this applies equally to the resolution we made yesterday about uh, the law of discovery. Uh, my, my concern for both is the exact same thing, which is empty words. Uh, I, as we were discussing yesterday's resolution, I was thinking slowly, uh, and it dawned on me that we've spent eight years on one resolution that we discussed here today. And why was it that we spent eight years on that? Because it was going to make a big difference in our lives, that's why. And on our second resolution, we've been discussing that one for a couple of years, and we're now committed to discussing it for several more years. And why are we taking several years to do that? Because it's going to make a big difference for us. And then we passed the third resolution yesterday on discovery. It felt like that one passed really, really fast. And now here, in a matter of minutes, we're going to do it again. Why are those resolutions passing so quickly? Because it's so easy to go to Facebook and hit a like button. And I have often looked at different international organizations that have uh, made really high-minded claims. And I don't want to be a national community that makes high-minded claims. Feeling the right thing, in my mind, is meaningless. Having the right thoughts, feeling guilty about the right things, is pointless. Actions matter. Engagement matters. So I'm, you know, I love my progressive brothers and sisters. I'm not one of them. But let's not be so progressive that we say things and are satisfied that we've said them. Thank you. 
just wanted to speak to the, the comment before in terms of why this conflict. And I think for me, it's the question, because that's a, a, a good question, um, in terms of what role has the church played in this would be the rubrics through which I view this. Um, and the church being complicit with um, anti-Semitism, which created a, a huge problem, and the church being complicit uh, through a very active role of Christian Zionism that uh, also contributes to this uh, problem. Uh, so those to me would be why, why this conflict uh, calls the attention of the church specifically. Uh, Paul Bergen from First Man in Edmonton. Uh, I do not profess to be an expert in investment and divestment, uh, nor in economic sanctions or boycotts or those sorts of things. I know nothing about these things. And so I have no real sense at all whether these actions as being proposed here are meaningful, helpful, significant, I just don't know, and I haven't heard any experts in either of these things speak to us about those things. So I guess I'm at a point where I would prefer just to, uh, I support the intent of this, absolutely, uh, but uh, to state that I can say yes or no to this motion at this point, I, I can't because I haven't heard anyone speak to those things. I think I would prefer if we were able to say things about what we intend to do, which we've done up to the fourth bullet there. And if there are other things, like specific commitments that we want to make as a conference about partnering, learning more, sponsoring tours, I, I would be all over that. Uh, but these things that I don't know anything about, I can't really vote on. Okay. Uh, thank you, Paul, and also the earlier um, comment about, uh, well, we don't know who to uh, uh, um, target in, in, a, in a boycotting and divesting. Uh, it was impossible for us to put within the resolution a lot of specifics about that. Uh, I think the assumption was that we would take that and then act upon it and, and, and do some research. Uh, but I, I can say that uh, there have been a lot of people involved in that movement uh, who do have many more specific um, uh, guidelines for which uh, companies to, to focus on. Um, uh, the American Friends Service Committee, the Quakers, who have been uh, the, the only historic peace church that has had a presence in Palestine, has done quite a bit of work uh, on the boycott divest movement from a Christian faith perspective. And uh, if you go to their website, they have a number of really good uh, documents on that, in, uh, including links to uh, companies that are involved particularly in the security and the, um, uh, the military equipment and the surveillance uh, and uh, that kind of thing that perpetuates the, uh, the uh, um, the occupation. And uh, Palmer mentioned a couple of them, but there are many uh, others as well. Um, um, and so that information is available. Uh, at the table outside, we have a, a little bit of a, a, a FAQ sheet on uh, uh, boycott divest as well, and that has some, some of those links. So I would encourage everybody to to take this action, but then go and, and, and do more research on those uh, companies. Susan Kennel Harrison from Windsor Mennonite Fellowship. Um, I lived in Israel, Palestine in 87 when the Nakba or the uprising first began, and I saw lots of attempts at nonviolent action on the part of the Palestinian community. So I think we need to recognize that that historically has been a part of how they proceeded, and we are many decades past that. Um, secondly, I have been for decades now involved in interfaith dialogue. Um, something very dear to my heart, and I am for this resolution, but I am also very aware that it's very empty if we do not do the work of education. For those of you who don't feel you know what is behind this, that if you vote for the resolution, I understand it, that you are committing yourself to doing that education, 
And I encourage you to educate yourself through living books, and that is talk to the people that are in your neighborhoods and in your cities and in this country. And so not just cooperating with Jews and Palestinians and Israeli citizens that you meet here, but actually hearing from them. Because if we pass this resolution, it will put a lot of fear in the hearts of the Jewish Canadians that I work with in interfaith dialogue. It will create big barriers in the dialogue groups that I'm a part of. And knowing that, I still think we need to act in solidarity with the Palestinian Christians among the other Palestinians. Thank you. Charlene Jungi and Harder, Valley View Mennonite Church in London. Um, I also I, I stand in principle behind this uh, this motion, uh, and I affirm everything that Susan says in terms of interfaith dialogue. My question is around what other denominations in Canada uh, have taken this motion. It is my understanding. Am I right to think that there, that we wouldn't be the first to do this? Um, and that's, that's my question. I, my ch children go to a choir in a United Church, and I think I recall seeing a, a poster on the wall in the United Church uh, that may have had something similar about why, why do we support Palestine. So my question would be, uh, are there other denominations uh, in Canada that we would be joining in doing this? The United Church of Canada uh, certainly has has been one. I, I think uh, there have been one or two other groups, so that's something I can't answer to. Um, in the United States, uh, which uh, is the biggest partner of of the state of Israel, uh, a number of con of um, denominations have taken this kind of action: the Presbyterian Church, the United Methodist Church, uh, and uh, United Churches of Christ, and a number uh, of others. So. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I just would like to test the group. Uh, this is a big question, one we need to take seriously, and so I would like to ask you if you are ready uh, for a question at this time. Uh, if you think we are, would you raise your hands as a testing? Are there those who really would like to continue this conversation before we vote? Well, I think that is uh, an indication that we'll call the question. So those who are in favor of the friendly amendment, I guess there was two in there, the last amendment, uh, would you raise your hands? For the whole thing, yes. Those opposed? The motion is carried. Okay. We'll now ask the listening committee to come forward. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Yes, well, I'll do the mic like 10 after that. Good evening. I'm Chris, sharing tonight on behalf of the Listening Committee. Uh, we have seen this as a sacred exercise, a practice of faith, striving to be a mirror to the sights, sounds, and words of this assembly. So thank you to this body for being bold and sharing with us and being open with us in this way. We've gathered, we've heard beautiful music, We've seen some rocking ukuleles. Many people from many places gathered together. And we've heard much as a group in the hallways on Twitter, in our delegate sessions, and other places. And we have heard that we are a people in the midst of our differences being church together, persisting with one another in faith and that we all have love for the church. We've heard the weight that comes with leadership. We've heard the call for greater diversity in our leadership, transition teams, and task forces, and especially in our churches represented here at assembly. 
we have lamented those churches that could not be here with us. We've heard voices from our youth demanding care for the church. We have heard the cry and the weeping from those who have been cast as other and reminded that this is not a safe space. We have heard fear and anxiety, indifference and newness. We have heard a sadness for what, what may be lost. Yet we have heard a passion and love for our witness workers and care for our schools. We have heard excitement and passion in our seminars, over our meals, and in the hallways. We have heard the vulnerability, tears, the weeping, the joy, the laughter, the intense debate, anxiety, and fear, and also a strong desire, if you're like me, for rest. With this mirror, we have seen and heard that we are all very much human in pursuit of faith in Jesus Christ, listening and striving to experience the presence of God in this particular time and this particular place. And we have heard that we are desiring to be a church together, chained to one another, showing us in this space, that we are in this together. Amen. Thank you for all your listening. We now have open mic time. I guess it's kind of a free-for-all. So if you'd like to come to Maybe we're tired. I know I'm getting there. Well, let's call up the resolutions committee then. They've got a couple more jobs to do. Whereas those able technology folks have provided us with the good communication tools we needed to hear and see and be heard and seen, and whereas this tech has operated almost without noticeable technical difficulties, and whereas this communication has extended beyond this campus to the church across Canada and around the world through tweets, live feeds, etc., be it resolved that we thank our technological team for their hard work in helping us navigate our communication tools. And whereas this venue and the TCU staff have been wonderful hosts accommodating us and feeding us very capably. Be it resolved that we express our gratitude for a job well done. Whereas the people of Mennonite Church, Saskatchewan, are awesome. And whereas they have wonderfully provided us with the resources we need to assemble together, and whereas the worship leaders, writers, artists, and musicians have helped us pay attention to the presence of God in our midst, be it resolved that we express our thanks to the staff and the many, many volunteers of MC Sask for their passion and commitment to leading us in this gathering time.
And I think we have one last duty, and that is to move that the ballots should be destroyed. Do I, do I need to have a show of hands for that? Those who affirm that, raise your hands, please. Yes, passed. Thank you. All right, I think we've got one more piece left yet, and maybe the uh, final worship uh, and litany group. We're running ahead of uh, schedule, so I'll maybe prepare yourselves. We'll be moving into that. I'd like Hilda to come forward. This woman that we see in front of us has served us capably as a moderator for two terms and been on the general board before that. Uh, if you want to learn to know someone who is worried about detail, this is someone like that. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work alongside her and not to have to do the detail myself. If you want to, somebody as a, as a model of hard work, you've got someone here that you find hard to keep up with. Uh, I don't, I've not been a moderator of Mennonite Church Canada, I've been a moderator of other things, but um, I have not, and I, but I have observed of moderators, and I don't think in the history that I've been involved, which is a few years, with Mennonite Church Canada, I've ever seen a moderator work harder at things. This woman has put in a tremendous amount of time, way beyond what one might expect. If you want to find someone who is full of grace and sensitivity, Hilda exemplifies that. And there are many fine attributes, other attributes. And so with that, on behalf of the general board, on behalf of all of us here, I'd like to just present you with this little thank you gift. Thank you. It's been a joy to serve the church. It's been really great to get to know so many people. I work a lot with the board and they have transitioned in and out and it has just been great to get to know people across the country very passionate about serving God in different ways and, and getting to learn the different gifts of people and how that gets used on your behalf uh, uh, in, in, in church building. I really have appreciated um, Willard, uh, he has had a real row to hoe. How can you tell I have prairie farm background? Um, and, and I really hope you support him and support the new board. We're in a real transitional time. I see this as an opportunity. Letting go isn't easy, but it is important to do. We're always needing to release and find the joy of something new. So I just wish a real blessing on the, the, the incoming board in the work you have. Do it with joy. And, and I invite all of you to be part of it. Uh, I hear this stuff about hierarchy sometimes. And I've never worked in a flatter system than the church. So, I would invite you to support them, work with them, critique, yes, but maybe more support. So thank you very much. We are very grateful to Golden West Radio for generously sponsoring this evening's dinner. Golden West is based in Altona, Manitoba, and has been a local voice in towns and cities across the prairies for over 50 years, encouraging and supporting Canadian music and growing to support even more communities. Thank you, Golden West.
The plants on this stage were kindly lent to us by Dieter Martin Greenhouse in Langham. It will be up to the people around your table to decide who gets to take home the centerpieces. We're not gonna do the oldest or the youngest or the furthest or the farthest. Please just someone take them with you. It would be a great help for cleaning up this space and making it ready for worship tomorrow morning if when you leave tonight, you would take all the hymnals on your table out of the doors there and there'll be tables ready to receive each of those, um, those books. So please take those out. Thank you, each of you, for your generosity. All the p envelopes from the generosity wall were taken and over $5,050 was raised. We don't have the exact amount yet, but know that more than we asked for was raised. So thank you very much. Those donations will all be matched. Once again, a reminder that your feedback forms can be handed in at the registration table downstairs. Tonight, following this session, Theatre of the Beat will present This Will Lead to Dancing in Gallery C and D. Tonight at 9 o'clock, you can still buy tickets at the door. And also a reminder that there is a resource table outside of Gallery C and D for those congregations, persons that are looking for resources to help you continue to process um, the being a faithful church. I think that is everything. Did I, Karina, did I forget anything? All right, here we go. Worship, please. What do we do with these? Oh, there, I, I didn't get a formal announcement, but I did see that there was a box downstairs to collect these. Um, it's very helpful if you take out your name and put it in recycling and just hand this back in. It saves one more step for all the volunteers. Anyone else have a question that I probably can't answer? But... Being done meetings early. Now that's a good tradition to start. A friend of mine, a very good and close friend of mine who is relatively new to the Mennonite Church, maybe the last eight to ten years, uh, reminded me of a tradition that we used to hold very dearly, uh, I say used to, and then also that our Amish cousins still do hold quite a bit. And so I would like to read, uh, read something he forwarded on to me and then I'll enter into a call to worship and opening prayer. Jesus says, If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there. First go and be reconciled to that person. In the past days we have engaged in strong and robust debate and discernment. Many of us have been hurt. Many of us have hurt others with our words or our silence. Imitating the example of Mennonite horse-drawn wagons and buggies crisscrossing the fields, going from home to home to make peace before communion service. Please use the rest of this evening or early tomorrow morning to cross the room and confess. Repent and make peace with those whom we are not right before we participate in communion tomorrow morning. Let us pray. Uniting God, we pray that the church may be one in Christ, a true fellowship of the cloud of witnesses who know their oneness in you and speak the word of healing to this troubled world. And now as stillness descends upon the earth and the day passes into darkness, hold us, O Lord, and all you love in tender care. Protect us as we rest. 
Refresh our bodies, minds, and spirits so we may rise to love and serve you tomorrow. We rest in your mercy and trust in your grace. Amen. Let us turn to 121 and sing the story. Nothing is lost on the breath of God. And let us rise to sing. recognizing those whose service is complete and blessing those who will begin to serve and continue to serve. You will find the commissioning litany on the screen and in your program books on page 9. I would also invite you to take Sing the Journey and have it open to song number 73. I'll signal you when it's time to sing. <laughs> Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, 
Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. In all that changes, God's unfailing love and God's covenant of peace continues with us. Thank you to those who have served in volunteer or staff roles with Mennonite Church Canada. Your work and ministry in your respective role has now come to an end. While there has been opportunity for creativity and critical engagement these past two years, we recognize that there has, what has also been challenge, and we have needed to let go of ministries. We are grateful for the commitment, passion, and wisdom with which you have served. We recognize that the child assignment is not finished. Yet God continues to welcome your gifts through other avenues and ministries. He wants to honor you with a song of sending and blessing. So, I invite the following individuals whose assignment has ended between Assembly 2014 and this Assembly 2016 to please stand. If your position has come to an end and you are staff of Mennonite Church Canada, please stand. If you have been a short and long-term witness worker and your role has been completed, please stand. If you have been an elected or appointed member of any of the councils, committees, the Being a Faithful Church Task Force, the Future Directions Task Force, or a general board member, please stand if your assignment is now complete. We want to recognize each one of you and bless you by singing this song. And we will sing to you, The Lord Lift You Up. In this time of change for Mennonite Church Canada, there are staff and witness workers who will continue in a season of unknown. There are general board members who are newly elected and those volunteers whose terms are continuing. You are called to give oversight at a significant time of transition. This season calls for a listening presence to God and to one another. Creativity and diligence, courage and risk-taking, prayerful decision-making. In all of this, God's unfailing love and covenant of peace are the sure foundation on which to build and lead. We commit to pray for you all and those yet to be appointed in these times of change. We commit to participate in this national process of change for our church. 
So now I invite the following individuals to stand who will begin and continue to serve. So please rise when you are called. If you are continuing as Mennonite Church Canada staff, please stand. If you are continuing as witness workers, please stand. For those newly elected and those continuing to serve on the general board, please stand. If you are leaders of Mennonite Women Canada and Mennonite Men, please stand. And those of you who may be in other volunteer positions that I haven't specifically named, I would invite you to please stand as well. We want to sing a song of sending and blessing for you in your work and ministry on behalf of Mennonite Church Canada. Let's take the Lord lift you up and sing to these leaders. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. In all that changes, God's unfailing love and God's covenant of peace continues with us. Amen. At this time, I invite all of us to join together in our evening prayer, which should come onto the screen. You. God knows when we sit down and when we rise up. God discerns our thoughts from far away. Where can we go from God's spirit? Where can we flee from God's presence? If we fly up to the heavens, you are there. If we make our bed in the depths, you are there. If we rise on the wings of the morning, or settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide us, and your right hand will hold us fast. For God formed us as a people. God's spirit birthed us anew. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? So lie down and sleep in peace tonight. Let us turn to 49 and sing the story. I will come to you in silence. Let us rise to sing and remain risen for the benediction.
Before the benediction, I'd like Calvin to come up to close the meetings, and then I will send you with God's blessing. Maybe the first, the first thing we need to do, uh, Mr. Moderator, is give you a new tag here. So there, this is the beginning. <laughs> Welcome. At the start of this week's assembly, Cindy Wallace said that if we confess our failures and fears and losses, we open, up, we open space for hope, for life rising from death. Indeed, this weekend, we had a chance to lament the losses that we leave behind and express the fears that lie ahead. In fact, the conclusion of our delegate assembly today does not necessarily mean an end to this process but I already see sparks and signs of new life in our midst. So it's with a sense of hope and faith in God that I step into my new role to serve as moderator of Mennonite Church Canada. And we look forward to meeting again with you at our next delegate assembly in 2018 or sooner for a time together to reunite, to worship God, to fellowship, and to make decisions on matters important to the church. Blessings to you as you engage in the mission of the church. And most important, I now declare the Delegate Assembly of Mennonite Church Canada 2016 closed. <laughs> And now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, God's presence embrace you, and give you peace. Amen.